It was a, a name that came up quite early on, which um, is a bit 50-50 with us. Sometimes we get album titles quite early on and we stick with them and, you know, it seems to keep everybody happy and, um, you know, it works for the whole project. Or sometimes it's, you know, last day mad, like everybody trying to, like, think of really, you know, sort of like any title that can come into their heads. So, yeah, we just felt that it summed up the uh, uh, eclectic nature of the 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 songs and the, the sounds on the album. I think the songs uh, on this record uh, have a sort of much more sort of positive spin on them, more sort of open, spiritual, you know, for want of a better word, um, in its content and sort of you know, uh, looking outwards a lot more. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, music has always been, you know, we tr try to make it anyway. It's atmospheric and, and visual. And, um, you know, it's a great... The, the sounds of the universe just, just sounds right. And, like I said, I like the arrogance of it, too. Also, the word universe is, is, has um, come up um, a few times in the lyrics for the new songs. And, you know, we think it's quite pompous, which is and slightly witty, so uh, we thought it was a good title. I always find it difficult to pinpoint any themes that sort of go along with um, lyrical content and um, musical content, but they, they develop, they seem to develop during the recording. I mean, there's definitely themes there within the songs, and, and I would say that, um, you know, they're sort of loosely tied together. I think that there's a, quite a, a, a broad variety, really. It's not, there's not really a, a theme to the record, other than, like, all the themes that I always write about, I suppose. <laughs> I keep joking about it, that I keep writing the same songs over and over again, but it's sort of true up to a point. I interpret them as looking at my part in situations, and they can be everyday situations or situations that are happening in the world, and how I, quite often how I feel about that is how I use my voice. Um, you know, I kind of want to draw you into the song. Depeche Mode... Uh, normally write, you know, uh, songs about life, you know, the world we live in and life in general. It's one of our sayings. Um, and, and musically, um, you know, we've we sort of maybe gone a bit more electronic on this album. Uh, Martin's had this uh, uh, obsession uh, with uh, buying new synthes old synthesizers um, on eBay. And... Um, and that's been quite interesting and quite, uh, you know, as soon as one arrives, we get it out and try it and stuff. So that's been quite cool. But uh, I think the main thing about the album is, um, which is different, we've got Martin's really become um, uh, quite prolif prolific in the last couple of years. So we've, we've got a lot more songs than we normally have. We first got together, I think it was in January of this year, something like that. Um, we went to, to Mark's place and um, uh, Daniel and Jonathan, me and Fletcher Mark, and we sat in his studio and listened to the work he'd been doing and I had a bunch of things that I'd been doing. And um, sort of loosely talked about, uh, Ben was there as well, Ben Hillier, actually, and um, he got very excited about some ideas he had about approach and um, there being so, some more performance in the studio from us, which is, you know, that's the performance that happens in the studio. It's um, it's not like us sort of all getting together and jamming or something. It's it, you know, but quite often it's it, you know, a song will be sort of structured around, you know, Martin playing a guitar line or something, um, um, or or me, you know, singing. And sometimes us doing that together, um, but you know, quite often that's that becomes the kind of anchor that the you know the rest of the song is kind of built from. Um, and I think we, you know, at first what happens is you you kind of 
you, you throw a lot of stuff down. Um, and, and then gradually, you know, it becomes a case of, like, taking things away rather than adding more. Um, but we got together, I, I guess we went away and took the songs away, and I, I spent, before we actually began recording, I went straight back home, I came straight back to New York, and um, I began uh, working on, with my voice, on Martin's songs. Because I, I really um, was inspired by a lot of them. And um, I wanted to bring something to those songs um, with my voice. And so I sort of began to work every day as if I was sort of rehearsing for a tour or something. Um, and what I found was, um, after a while, really uh, allowing myself to sort of become part of the songs, I started to forget about what I thought they were supposed to sound like and what I was supposed to sound like in it and just w was able to use what I had to uh, contribute to it and add to it and hopefully enhance the feeling of the songs. And so when we first got together, um, I mean Ben Hillier was one of the first to notice that how much sort of a preparation I'd done. But it really served me well because once I'd sort of stepped up to the mic in the studio and I perform sort of live in the studio anyway. I don't go into any vocal booth or anything. I like to just hold a microphone and um you know and, and work the song like I do live. I was I'm not running around the studio and stuff but um I kinda like to crank up the speakers and just perform it live. And I'll do like, you know, three or four takes and, and if it's right, if it's feeling good and I feel good, you know, it's kind of like a it's not like everybody starts jumping around, but, you know, you get some nods and, you know, generally I know if what I'm doing is in the right ballpark. I think it's taken about, um, in the end it would have taken about five to six months, which is sort of usual time uh, for us. Uh, we've recorded it um, in, well, most of it in New York and, and some of it in Santa Barbara. I think that the interaction, for me personally, with, with Martin has changed quite a bit. I feel I, I feel more confident uh, uh, about my ideas, and I also feel really good about. I feel like those ideas are really heard, and um, uh, you know, quite often I witness them come into life, and that 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 always feels good. I mean, it's really difficult sometimes when you you know, for me in the past, you know singing somebody else's songs and trying to interpret them. Um, you know, it it's something that's a, it's a little tricky, you know, because on one hand, I'm going to do my own thing, but on the other hand, I have the, you know, the songwriter sitting there who's very meticulous about how he wants that song to, to sound and, and certainly what how he wants the notes to be heard and the words to be sung. And so... In the past, you know, and I, in the, in the past, to be quite honest, um, you know, I, I've sort of allowed that process to just kind of be as it was. But I think in the last couple of records, and certainly this one, I've, I've, like I said, I felt much more confident about what I'm bringing to the sound, and it's allowed me the freedom to really just sort of express myself um, within a band, and, and, you know, it's, it's always a compromise, um, that's, that's what part of being a, in a band is, but quite often what happens in that compromise is, you know, you're pleasantly surprised by other things that, you, if you allow it to happen, don't try and sort of control things all the time and go into a certain direction, um, which, you know, we all do, um, but on this album, what I've noticed being quite different to others is that I felt like I was... I've been, you know, Martin and I have kind of been joining a lot more, um, and somehow, sort of, without even talking about it, really, we seem to be going in the same direction with what we wanted to do with these songs. It's been a very good vibe, you know, and we seem to be getting on very well together, you know, and uh, I sort of say the atmosphere has been, you know, really quite stable, you know, and. Uh, and just very creative, and um, it couldn't be better, to be honest. I think that the the atmosphere within the band has just been improving, you know, with time. 
um, you know, they've, you know we are, we're quite famous for not getting on, you know, in, at various points in our history. And I think, yeah, that really has become a thing of the past. Um, you know, we got on fairly well during the making of Playing the Angel and the tour, I think, was a, a, a joy to be on and, you know, everybody enjoyed it and, you know, was pleased when it ended, but, you know, also left it with a little bit of regret. So, you know, I think we've just continued in that vein and I think, you know, everyone's a lot less precious about um, everything now. You know, I think we can sit down and have a meeting and um, you know, um, see other people's points of view and concede certain things and, you know, it's... Yeah, you know, I just think we, we, we you know, have a general respect for each other now that, that maybe um, wasn't um, as prevalent before. The techniques that uh, Martin and I use are quite different. And Martin's much more traditional in the way that he'll sit down with a guitar and um, develop an idea or sit at the piano and develop an idea and develop the notes and where he wants to go with them. Um, and um, he's a you know, way more accomplished musician, I would say, than I, than I am. But, you know, I, I write in a very different way to him. Um, I like to, you know, at the moment I've been, you know, I, I, continue to write with Christian and Andrew, uh, Christian Eigner and a Andrew Philpot, and, and that's been working, you know, since after playing, Angel, playing the Angel Tour, we uh, wrote, recorded and produced Hourglass together, and it was, for me, it was kind of continuation on from that, but um, once we get into the studio, um, you know, it becomes something different, and, you know, when I was demoing the songs that I contributed to this record, you know, I had in the back of my mind all the time, like, don't be too kind of meticulous about how I want things to be because I want uh, the input, um, whoever the production team may, may be, and, and Martin certainly, um, in the studio to, to contribute ideas to those songs. And, you know, Martin is, was very, you know, he contributed a lot to all the things that, you know, I've, I've put, uh, that I have on this record. Yeah, I don't think you can really uh, tell when the songs are back-to-back are -back that the song's mine or Dave's because it does go through the whole Depeche process and, you know, sort of Ben's production. And, you know, once, you know, Dave's sung the vocal and then I put backing vocals on it and play guitar on it and, you know, it, 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 it ends up sounding like us. We tend to uh, treat each song differently. Um, I think the idea is to try and, and create for that song uh, the best possible atmosphere, uh, the best possible treatment to suit that song. And uh, most of the time we get that right and sometimes we don't. Um, like I say, it's been, the, it's been quite interesting, um, this M Martin's um, addiction, and we should say, to vintage synthesizers and drum machines because uh, it has sort of been it's made it quite creative in the studio because when these things arrive you know you have to work out how it's used and uh and there from there something comes from it you know i think all of the songs on the album sound very different but the the um the fact that you know i've been buying so much stuff um uh, old analog drum machines and uh, synthesizers on ebay um has has helped to shape the record in 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 some ways you know, uh, packages were turning up daily and we were using them as they arrived and you know that obviously um, had an impact on the record yeah I mean the, there are there are differences between Martin's songwriting and, and Dave's songwriting um, and um, regarding but all songs are really treated in the same way when it comes to the actual recording um, and um, you know, Dave's been uh, really improving um, over the last, uh, f especially from his last solo album. You know, he's uh, very confident now in the studio. And, um, and you know, really, in the end of the day, I think it would be quite hard to distinguish which was a Martin song and which was a Dave song. Mm -hmm. The reason we chose Ben uh, for this record was because we enjoyed making the last one so much 
and we were really pleased with the the end result last time. Um, it just seemed really um, a stupid idea to me to, for us to be considering somebody else when we'd left on such a high note and and we, we all enjoyed the process so much. Well, I think what Ben really learned on playing the Angel, and he's definitely brought to this race, it, he knows what he can get out of us. He knows the best way to get that out of us and um, to keep us working, to keep the energy going in the studio. And he's very musical, and so is Luke and Ferg. You know, so they they really brought a lot of that sensibility to what we're doing. And they're also very, you know, um, you know, all the technology that's available. And, and we actually used a lot on this record. We, we Martin's got this new fetish with buying things on eBay. Mostly, actually, I, I think pretty much all, like, uh, instruments. And um, we have all these... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> we have all these uh, analog synthesizers and drum machines and stuff that we used way back in the 80s kind of thing you know he's been promptly buying all that stuff up so we you know we use the modern technology as well and you know the processing but generally things come from uh something that's being developed either from a, an analog synthesizer or from a guitar or from smashing something on the floor or, you know some of the old stuff that we used to do a lot of that we've been doing that again with this record Ben is a real all-rounder. It's just amazing what you know, you know he's he's done in his life. Yeah, you know, I mean, when he was a kid, apparently he started uh, you know working with some orchestra, like you know, sort of miking up an orchestra or something. You know, when he I think he was like fourteen or something, and uh, you know, then he's you know learned all these engineering skills, and you know, he he's. I don't know where he learned you know, all of his uh, electronic wizardry. You know, but he's uh, you know he's great with synths and um, uh, modular mo modular synths. He, he knows exactly what's going on all the time, so I'm sure he uses that to his advantage. I think he's a bit smarter than us. <laughs> it's unusual for Depeche Mode to pick the same producer twice. We tend to want to move. Well, actually, what tends to happen is the producer doesn't want to work with us again because it's normally the the worst year in his life. Uh, but um, <clears throat> you know, we felt playing the angel went really well, and um, and I don't know. We just thought it'd be good to use Ben again, and Ben was available, and um, it has been successful. Yeah. We're sort of one man down, Depeche Mode, because um, Alan left the band, um, say, f quite a while ago, and you know he was probably the best musician in the band. So you know, we haven't filled his place, so we need to work with a team of people um, uh, to cover Alan's thing. And, uh, you know, just generally, it's uh, nice to work. I mean, we're working with Ben, but we've got two other people that we've never worked with, so, you know, so there has to be some change. You know. Well, we really enjoyed working with him on playing the Angel, and he definitely, he gave us the kick up the arse that we, we definitely needed. It's a team effort, it really is, and, you know, I, I've said this before, but I'll say it again, it, you're only as good as the people you put around you. You know, especially with someone, a band like Depeche Mode, who have, you know, produced a lot of uh, material over the years. It's like, it, I feel like we're in a f the perfect position to be able to, you know, um, explore uh, other ideas through other people. Because, you know, one of the things, one of my fears about Depeche Mode, about, my, about the band, is always that we just become like a parody of ourselves and um, start to kind of, think we can rely on like past you know trophies to get another one and, and it's it's not it's not how art is you've got to keep trying to move forward and challenge your own ideas you know i i do have my favorite tracks on the album um at the moment and they change all the time um I think my favourite is actually Comeback, which is a song that I wrote with Andrew and Christian, which has really, um, you know, come, come a long way from the demo. Um, In Chains is another one, uh, which I really like, which um, I think is a sort of classic soul song. It's in the, you know, it's got that kind of uh, feel about it. That it could have been something that sort of Marvin Gaye performed. And it's, that, it's that kind of solely song. Uh, it's got beautiful lyrics. 
It was great to sing. It was one of the most challenging songs for me to get where I wanted it to be vocally and uh, with my voice. But you know, we got there uh, in the end. With uh, in, in fact, in the last few weeks, we you know, we read that, redid that vocal again. At first, I didn't want to redo it because I thought uh, what I had there was good enough. You know, and uh, sometimes when I think it's good enough, I don't want to mess with it. Um, but Ben just said, "Let's have a go. Let's see what happens." And when I immediately started singing, I knew that what I was doing was better. It felt better. If something was. Sometimes that happens. It happens like when you're touring as well. Like once in a while, one in every sort of twenty gigs or something. It's like you you feel like you could do anything. I could do anything with my voice. So I could sing anything, and everything's just falling into place. And that, that's sort of when the the magic happens. But you kind of have to do a lot of work to get there. Um, but it's worth it. And with this album, we've got so many tracks that um, it's really difficult for me to actually choose a, a favourite. I mean, I really like um, probably, you know, like 14, 15 of the tracks a lot, which becomes a problem because we've got to then hone that down to make an actual physical release that's, you know, probably not going to be more than, you know, 11 tracks. We're mixing the tracks, you know, slowly, and so far we've mixed six now. So it's really easier to keep in your mind the ones that are, you know, fresh. And, you know, we've just finished uh, mixing Corrupt, which I think sounds really powerful, and, um, you know, I'm quite enjoying that one at the moment, which, you know, wasn't necessarily one of my favourites before, but because we've just finished mixing it, it's, it's uh, you know, I think it, it it is sounding quite special. But there are some of the other ones that, that are um, that I don't think you've heard yet. That are um, quite different for us, more you know, sort of easy listening. You know, in a in a, in a good way. I mean, like very sort of spacey, and you know, maybe like you know, futuristic uh, easy listening. I like um, well, I like you know. I, I suppose every uh, musician would always say they like on their new album. I mean, if you start to say you don't like so many songs it's pretty weird but uh there's a lot of um good songs on this album and uh, quite a few of my favorites uh perfect i like in sympathy um wrong um fragile i mean it's there's a lot of and it's quite good at the moment i'm not i don't tend to be that bored um imagine i've heard these things about a thousand times you know so that's a good sign We unanimously, without even really talking about it, I think, chose Wrong as the first single just because we felt it was more of a statement, it was very different for us. There are other tracks like uh, In Sympathy, which I think maybe is more classic Depeche Mode. And, you know, I'm sure at some point that may come out as a, as a single, whatever a single is these days, whatever a single means these days, you know, as maybe as a promotion tool for the record at some point. But... Um, yeah, we we always like to do something different as a first single to just to you know, announce that we're back. It's sort of an unconventional sort of pop song, if you like. It's almost more of a sort of rap or rant or something. But um, um, and it's got and its sort of groove is uh, a little different too in that way. And I, I think we chose it because we didn't choose it because we felt it was the best song. We chose it because we felt that it was striking and that it um, was a good song to choose for the next chapter of what it is we're doing. We've chosen Anton because we, we, you know, we just have such a great relationship with him and you know, I think that he is um, you know, just very good at what he does. It's difficult for us to think of working with other photographers, even though we are, because the results that we get with Anton are always so good, and he, and apart from that, he always makes the actual uh, you know uh, uh, photo session so enjoyable. It you know you don't feel like you're just you know stuck in a studio. I don't know why. So I think it's just because we know him so well. Anton Corbin has been our um, sort of visual man for quite a while now, and uh, gets involved in in videos, covers. Uh, almost a, a fifth man, you know, and uh, with the live set and stuff like that. So, uh, um, 
so you know we really love Anton's work so you know we continue to to work with him this time round with the uh, album artwork we gave him the title which he really liked and he just went away and came back with a, 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 the, a, a, a couple of ideas and one we liked more than the other and then we tried to have a bit of input as well but he's, he's, he, he doesn't really like our input much so we said okay fine <laughs> <laughs> well, the first idea we saw was just a a symbol. You know, we couldn't even a D and an M, but to us it looked like an O and an M. Uh, but it, I think the rest of the stuff hadn't been sent by a, by a mistake. You know, yeah. I mean, it's um, you know, it's it's it's, it's good. You know, you, you can with Anton, you can give him a title like Sounds of the Universe, and he can come up with something that's not not crass and um, and looks good. So yes, we have chosen um, a video, a video to direct, so, and uh, a guy called Patrick Dalton, Daughters, who's done The Liars and a couple of things, and uh, he'll be doing the video for Wrong. We chose him for the same reason, really, that we cho chose Wrong, which, which was we wanted to do something that was strikingly different to what you've seen before uh, visually, in the video department from Depeche. His idea is a great idea. It's like a single idea that you could really see coming off. And I know his work, and we've, we've looked at his work, and um, everything that he does, or most of the things that he does that I've seen, they, they're, they're always based in one good idea that seem to always enhance the song, the energy of the song. And I think this song is a particularly energetic song, um, and it's immediately in your face. Um, so, you know, the visuals have got to go with that. This is not, you know, for me, like the, um, you know, um, an idea that was kind of like, you know, uh, a short film, which is this beautifully shot photography, which is slow moving and, you know, building a story around it, doesn't really work with this particular track because this particular track is really like a, you know, it's like an attack of words that just come at you from start to finish. It's not like a song, you know, chorus type thing. It's just, it's this onslaught of words. And you need something that's going to build with that uh, visually. And his idea was, I think, I think if it comes off, could will really do that. And I don't think it's the kind of thing where you would look at it immediately and go, oh, you know, Depeche, Depeche Mode have got another record coming out. And not that that's a bad thing, you know. Um, but for this particular track... I think he was the right choice. We'd never really enjoyed making videos, um, especially in our early days, because when, that's when video first really um, occurred, you know, ever. And uh, no one really knew what to do with a band, so they used to get to get us to act and things like that. And we're not very good actors, so <laughs> and we started working with Anton and uh, with a small team, um, and uh, that was more, always more enjoyable. But when, as soon as that magic word, it's a rap, you know, is, <laughs> we're, we're not disappointed, you know. When it comes to the tour, we haven't, we haven't yet, you know, talked about what songs we want to do. Um, the only thing we have talked about, you know, Martin and I both agreed that In Change would be a great opening track. Um, but that may or may not change. Uh, probably will. <laughs> but um, we ha we are working at the moment as well um, on set designs and and uh, visual designs. Um, um, but it's like it's early days really with that. We do have a little bit of an idea, maybe where we're going to go um, now. But uh, yeah, it's, it's still very um, vague and it's still very open and early i mean we still don't have to make any decisions you know um yet because it's we've still got you know what six months seven months before we actually start yeah i mean we've got to um decide on what songs we're going to play it's very very difficult we've got over 200 and i think i don't know exactly 250 songs something like that so it's very difficult whittling that down to a proper set and we're going to have a few heated discussions I'm sure you know trying to 
work out the exact set. Well, the first show is in Tel Aviv, in Israel, which is very exciting because it was the show that... Well, it's a different venue, but it was, it's a place that we were supposed to finish the last tour uh, uh, with, and um, unfortunately we couldn't play there for various reasons, but mostly because there was a war beginning there, and uh, not that there hasn't been a war there for a long, 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 long time, but uh, this was actually sort of happening in the backyard, if you like, and um, it, it just would have been wrong for us to... You know, uh, it's sort of irresponsible. We felt for us to expect a large number of people to be in a park uh, with all this stuff going off. It wasn't really. I don't think we were really concerned for our own sort of immediate safety or anything like that. It was really. We had to. We gave it a lot of thought, and it was something that we didn't do uh, lightheartedly. But we, in the end, we came to the decision that uh we couldn't do it and half of our crew as well that were really against going there as well so we had to sort of take all that into consideration um so it seems really fit in it i mean we, but when we even st talked about doing the tour we talked about the beginning in israel there are obviously you know key territories for us where we do extremely well um, and, you know, there are lots of places that we enjoy playing as well. You know, sometimes, they're the, you know, I mean, we, we do really well in Germany, we do really well in um, the old Eastern Bloc countries in particular. Um, you know, we, we generally do well in Europe. Europe's been really great to us for many years. I mean, there's, you know, France and Germany and a lot of Scandinavia are, are, huge part of Eastern Europe, which most of it is not Eastern Europe anymore, but um, Russia and um, Spain, Italy's always fantastic. Um, you know, we're going to all those places and many more, and also North America and Canada and down in South America, where, we, you know, we went to again on... We hadn't been down there for a long time, but we went on the last tour and it was hugely successful, and we're going back there this next year. And... Um, you know, and we'll see what happens after that. Hopefully we'll be able to return again to Europe and do more of America as well. We've often tried to analyse why we do so well in Germany and the old Eastern Bloc countries, and we haven't really got a, a definitive answer on that. Yeah, you know, we're not sure if our music's, you know, dark and that's what they like, or, you know, is it the fact that we went to the old Eastern Bloc countries before the fall of communism... I mean, a lot of bands didn't do that, you know, and that made an impact over there. You know, but, you know, we were huge, and we still are quite huge in Russia, and we never went to Russia before the fall of communism. You know, we sort of, like, you know, went all around the peripheries of it, but, you know, maybe, you know, news got to Russia that we were playing Poland and, you know, um, you know the Czech Republic and East Germany and, you know, Hungary and all those places. Well, we're going to, we're starting a tour in Israel, um, which will be for the first time, uh, but um, we were supposed to play there on the last tour, but there was a war going on uh, between Lebanon and the guerrillas and, um, and Israel, so we had to cancel the concert. So we decided um, this tour we'd play Israel first. And uh, most of the cities we played before, and there's just a couple of new ones. Belgrade, I think, uh, we're playing for the first time. I think we enjoy, you know, playing everywhere, really. We're very lucky that our crowd is quite universal and, um, you know, tends to be the sa pretty much the same, um, you know, all over, you know. I think that we're starting with stadiums this time just because, um, I suppose, A1, we feel we can... You know, the, we, we've done very well in Europe over the last few um, tours, and the last one was um, particularly successful. And yeah, you know, all the promoters are telling us this is what you have to do next, and it's something we've never done. So it's a challenge for us. So that, uh, yeah, it just makes sense for for us to be doing that at this stage of our career. For me, there's not really much of a difference once you get beyond a certain number of people at a, a concert. Um, 
you know, maybe that sounds a bit, you know, I don't know, blasé, a bit crass, but, you know, I mean, you can only see a certain, you know, beyond a certain point. And in some ways it gets less scary the bigger it goes because you feel kind of, like, inconsequential almost. <laughs> when we play warm-up shows, like, you know, we, when we played uh, at the, the Roxy, and, yeah, there's, like, 300 people, and there are people, like, you know, there looking at, you know, on top of you, watching you play a keyboard or watching you play the guitar and, look, you know, studying your hands. That's far scarier. <laughs> You know, our fans show up for us, and um, the rest of it, you know, it's, you can't, you know, you can't really, uh, you never know. You never know what's going to happen. I think we're making a record that is the best record that we've made in a long time, and of course everybody says that, and it sounds totally sort of, you know, cliché to say it, but I've enjoyed making this record with the guys, and, um, you, know, I, you know, I think we've had fun doing it, um, you know, and... Um, you can't really ask for more at this stage. You know, we've had a hugely successful career up until this point, and there's not really much more you can ask for. I think uh, people will be pleasantly surprised. With the success of the record, it's, I don't, I don't know what we're, we're expecting really, because it's, uh, you know, it's really hard to gauge what it means in this marketplace. Even if the record sold half what the last one did, maybe that's good. Who knows? <laughs> Media reaction's important and um, for our egos, and uh, sales reaction is is good as well. You know, you obviously want to be uh, what want people want to be seen as. You know, have recorded something that's um, that's decent and good. You know, and uh, you want it to do well. But you know, we don't have any ambitions. You know, to you know go in the stratosphere. You know, <laughs> uh, regarding our popularity, we're quite we're quite comfortable with how popular we are at the moment. Yeah. I think that this record is different um, to all of our other records and maybe they're all slightly different. Yeah, you know, I think some maybe have a bit more of a, uh, you know, kind of a, a twin feel or something, but not, not really. I think they all have an identity and, you know, I, th I think that this one just just fits in in the kind of uh, the history, really. I mean, it seems to fit neatly in, in with the history of the rest of the stuff that we've done. You can't really tell that until a few years after, you know. And we were so immersed in all this at the moment. Uh, you know, all we all we know is that the songs are really good, and and I think the sounds are really good. So we're hoping it's going to sort of stand up uh, to to the albums of of, of the past. It's my uh, it's my job, <laughs> and it's you know it's a really good one. You know, again, it sounds really cliche to say, but you know, this is this is uh, you know who who knew you know like almost thirty years down the line that still have the opportunity to sort of make the kind of music that you want to make. I'm very happy being in Depeche. Um, we, um, I've said a lot that you know we're, we're getting on very well. Um, the atmosphere is always good these days. You know, there, there aren't many days when you you know we've got a meeting and you come in dreading it, or or there's like you know real contentious issues going on between the band members. It's it's a joy to to be part of the the the, the whole thing, and I think that we're making a great album, and I think that we've you know already ticket sales of uh, seem to be doing amazingly well. So you know e everything's looking positive for us. To be in Depeche Mode, you know, right now is is really good, you know, because the vibes between the bands really good, and uh, you know, we feel we're making a good record, and and it's good, it's a good time, yeah. <laughs>